All right, is this thing on? No, seriously, is it on? I can't, I can't see. Take, take it off. All right, I'll take it off. Okay, cool. Whoa, what the fuck is that? That makes me want to kill myself. <laughs> Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to Everyday Nerd, the show where we tear down things that are popular. Or, or do we? I'm not, not sure. I'm your host, Zach Snyder, and today's Trendy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. If you're new around here, on Tuesdays, we take a look at what the masses are talking about. And today, that just so happens to be the popular movie on Netflix, Bird Box. Last week, I logged on to Twitter and everybody and their mother was talking about Bird Box. There were Bird Box memes, Bird Box comments and reactions. There was even an official Netflix post about how Bird Box was the most popular movie on the first week on Netflix or, or something like that. There, there's something about this movie that got people talking and honestly, I'm not sure exactly what that is. So I did watch Bird Box. Obviously, I wouldn't be able to make this video if I didn't, and I liked the movie enough, but I didn't love it, and there were some big issues that I ended up having with it. So it made me ask the question, is Bird Box overrated? Yes. Yes, it is. Thank you for watching. I will see you tomorrow. Actually, I definitely do think it's overrated, but in the same way that a ton of blockbuster movies end up being overrated. A lot of people went and saw a movie called The Meg last year, and I could tell from the trailer this movie was going to be awful, and yet it still did really well in the box office, so obviously that movie was overrated. But what I don't quite understand is why is everybody talking about it? A lot of people are comparing this film to other movies like The Happening because both include mass suicides, and Quiet Place because both have some kind of monster that you have to avoid by not using like one of your senses or a method of communication. Basically in the quiet place you have to be super quiet and in Bird Box you have to cover your eyes. If you don't do either of those you will die. I haven't seen The Happening or Quiet Place though. Quiet Place is on my list of films to see, but what I noticed about Bird Box is that there are some really good ideas here. I just hope that they weren't copy and pasted from these other films. So let's talk about the good of Bird Box. The opening is great, even on the verge of brilliant. Here you have Sandra Bullock's character yelling at two small children, telling them that they have to listen to her no matter what, they have to be quiet, and that they cannot take off their blindfolds or she will hurt them. We also know that they're going on a trip down a river and that this trip is very dangerous. This scene is uncomfortable to watch and you don't even realize that she's talking to children until the last second. Like I said, it's on the urge of brilliant. But then we see them start to leave on a boat, and then there's a flashback to five years earlier. Sandra Bullock's character is pregnant, she is very apathetic towards having a child. Meanwhile, mass suicides are happening throughout the entire world. It's a fine flashback, it helps establish Sandra Bullock's character. She's gonna go through this character arc of not wanting a child to having her two children. It's good, but then the flashback continues for another hour and 30 minutes. Now, I don't hate this hour and 30 minutes at all. There are some really good stuff here and I wanna avoid talking about major spoilers, but the issue here is that you just pulled me into the movie. You gave me the exposition I needed without completely telling me or leaving me in the dark. It could have been a riveting hour and a half movie of this mother and her two children on a boat and we could have gotten a few flashbacks here and there to explain everything that's going on, but instead we end up with a bunch of fluff. So we're introduced to this monster of the film, which is very vague, which I do enjoy a lot. We, we know that something's causing mass suicides and we know that if you look outside, then you're gonna end up killing yourself. The movie never quite explains how or why all of this happens. And I do have my own theories, but I, I don't think it matters. I don't think that this takes away from the film at all. We know that people are dying and here's this mother with two young children who also could die. That's enough to get me invested. The problem arises when we have an entire hour and 30 minutes of this movie dedicated to a bunch of characters. Uh, a bunch of characters that we know are going to die. Since this is a flashback and it's happening in the exact same house as the very beginning of the movie, that's in the present day, we know that they're all gonna die. So there's really no reason to get attached to these characters. 
unless they're good. Like, Playing Media starts off with like this kind of flashback with really strong, interesting, independent characters. These are not at all. We get the awful rapper Machine Gun Kelly. He's an actor in this movie. And then there's this other woman that's a rookie cop. Their entire character is that he likes her, but she doesn't like him. But since it's the end of the world, they end up that, that and then they leave. That's that's it. Then there's this guy who's writing about the end of the world, and he's a good actor. He was in Get Out, and I really liked his character there. So he kind of has like this comedic angle here too, but you know, he's gonna die as well, and there's nothing else to his character that makes him interesting enough for you to get sad about it. Then there's this asshole played by John Makovic, who is apparently a pretty big actor. I've never really seen anything he's in because everybody keeps on talking about him, but there's a lot of awful lines delivered by him. And his entire character is, I'm gonna be an asshole so that I don't die. But guess what? He dies. Then there's this annoying pregnant woman to counteract with Sandra Bullock because you know, she's pregnant. And I don't understand why on earth there are two pregnant women in this movie. It makes, like no sense. I mean, it kind of does. If you've seen the movie, then you know that this is the thing that developed Sandra Bullock's character to actually liking her children, you know, because a mother shouldn't actually like her children when they're born, whatever. But this other woman is annoying and literally none of the other characters liked her either. And then the rest of the characters basically had no other character to them. There was gay Asian guy. He was gay and he was an Asian. And then there's an old woman. Her, her entire character, she's an old woman. I don't even remember, I don't even remember any of these names to any of these characters. The last main character though was Trevante Rhodes' character and he was good for most of the film. I actually really liked his character. The, the problem that I had is that he ends up in a relationship with Sandra Bullock's character. Like 30 minutes into the film, he just starts hitting on her. And by the end of the film, like they're in this relationship but it makes no sense. Like, I don't buy it at all. Is it just because it's the end of the world and he's like, ah, she's a woman. She's single. I guess I could, you know, be with her. But, but like, I don't get it. And she's pregnant when he meets her. So like, I think the dude's just got some really weird kinks and that ends up making, making him go for her. I don't know. I, I just didn't buy it. But my main problem with these characters is that their sole purpose is to keep Sandra Bullock alive long enough to have her children and then, you know, let the rest of the movie play out. They're not developed at all. They're all one dimensional. In many respects, their dialogue is just awful at times. When we get all of the mother and children in the boat stuff, everything happens for a reason. And the writing involved here is actually really good. Especially there's this pivotal part of the movie where they're about to go down some rapids and Sandra Bullock has to decide which of her children are going to take off their blindfolds to show her directions, which basically means she's gonna sacrifice a kid. Like this was fantastic. But then we get things like this random guy that ends up coming in the movie halfway through we all know that there's something off about him, and then he ends up betraying everybody. This could be a spoiler, and I'm sorry if I just spoiled the movie for you, but let's be real. Like, somebody had to kill everybody off. Something had to do it. Of course it was this dude that looked like he was off his rocker the entire time. I understand the appeal to Bird Box. I did enjoy it enough to not, like, hate my viewing of it. It was just more mediocre than anything. So for everybody to talk about how great it is on social media just confuses me. But either way, if you enjoyed the movie, that's awesome. I'm glad you did. My favorite parts were Sandra Bullock's performance, anything that had to do with the river, and then there were some parts of the flashbacks that I enjoyed. The movie does a really good job of reeling you in and keeping you invested, which is great because the dialogue and the characters really needed work because they try to keep me not invested. It was, I, it was a very dichotomous like movie viewing of, of Bird Box for me. And I, I just want to know why everybody's talking about it. Well, I guess I'm a sellout now. Today's episode of Your Everyday Nerd is brought to you by Humble Bundle Monthly. We all want brand new games at a cheap price without doing any work. Well, there's never been an easier way than with Humble Monthly. 
On the first Friday of each month, you'll get a brand new bundle of great games to add to your Steam library for only $12. Last month, subscribers got the Mega Man Legacy Collection, Metal Gear Solid 5 with DLC, City Skylines, and 10 other games. With Humble Monthly, you can get access to the Humble Trove with over 60 other DRM free games you can download straight to your computer and play anytime, as well as an extra 10% off on the rest of the Humble Store as long as you're subscribed. There's four different options to subscribe. There's the $12 a month, which is the most common one. Then you can sign up for three months and save an extra $1. If you sign up for six months, you can save an extra $5. And if you decide to sign up for the entirety of 2019, you can get an entire month for free. If you subscribe right now, you can go ahead and unlock the January bundle with Just Cause 3, Wizard Legend, and Project Cars 2, with more on the way soon. But hurry up because this offer ends on January 4th, with a brand new bunch of games taking its place for February. Check out the details in the link below, and if you decide to sign up, you'll also be supporting your everyday nerd. That's all the time we have for today. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you didn't for some reason, you can hit the dislike button. Let me know in the comments if you've seen Bird Box and what you thought about it, because I'm really curious to see why everybody thinks it's so great. Go ahead and subscribe for more Your Everyday Nerd, and I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.